and welcome to another video from Double O Rail. In this video, we're going to show you how we manage to hide our power cables going to this section of the track using a 3D printed, real working cable trunking system. So, in this video, we're going to show you uh, exactly what we used, uh, how we installed it, and some tips for making the installation a little easier. So, uh, first off, we're going to go and show you exactly what we did, and then we'll run through all the different products that we used and how you can go about getting Okay, so here you can see uh, we have just a little bit of a scene put together uh, with the cable chunking in place. Since you've got the loco on the layout, uh, some ballast, uh, you can see it's uh, going here into the uh, cable chunking system and then off down here and off to the uh, power controller and to the bus and so on. Uh, we also have a 3D printed barrel, so uh, one of the little products that we have as well. Um, and you can see here uh, 3D printed uh, location case. And so it's a uh, works out pretty well. We'll end up putting a 3D printed uh, signal in. Okay, so the problem we were trying to solve was basically uh, we have these wires uh, just like everybody else does that runs uh, one to each rail and these usually have to be hidden some way or run through the baseboard by drilling a hole and what we wanted to do was try to come up with a way uh, to make it a little bit more realistic and uh, maybe come up with something kind of cool at the same time. Uh, so what we came up with was actual working uh, cable trunking system and you can see here it works pretty well. Uh, we have our wire here that's coming off the uh, inside rail and it runs under the track uh, into the cable trunking system and then it goes down into this uh, larger trunk and then goes off uh, to the power controller. And so here we have the same one uh, for the uh, other wire and we're just going to show you exactly how we route those and so on. So for this particular section uh, we're using uh, two different products. Uh, we're using this product here, which is a uh, C1.8 uh, cable trunk. Now, a C1.8 is actually a British railway standard, it's an network rail standard uh, that describes the interior and the exterior dimensions of the cable trough. And um, for our 3D printable product, um, you can get them in, they actually come in two uh, sections. So you get the lids, um, which, is, which is here, uh, but you also get the object file for a one meter section, which is how they're installed on the uh, railway. And we also have a 10 meter section so that you don't have to print out tons of these smaller ones if you've got a long section like we do here. And um, by printing out the lids, which we only s provide in one meter sections, uh, you get the same kind of effect that you would as if you had uh, 10 of these in a row. So these go in uh, to the actual cable trunking system itself. And this is a... Um, C1.43, which is the 350 millimeter, it's the largest uh, cable trough standard that uh, British Railways and Network Rail have. And um, this has an interior real world dimension of, I think, 350 millimeters. Uh, scale down to double O scale, it's big enough to handle about three or four wires. Uh, so it's pretty useful for running cabling and so on along the top of the layout. Um, now, this section here is a, a special product that we created. Uh, just so that you could run wires and cabling from um, outside of the trunk into the trunk. Um, and so on the real world, when you buy uh, cable trunking, they have these notchable sections. Um, but with the 3D print section, we obviously they're too fragile and too small to make it notchable. Uh, so what we did was we actually created a special version of each section that has the notches already built in. So this is a separate product. And uh, it comes with uh, two uh, different versions. It comes with um, the notch on just one side and then the notch like this on both sides. Normally you would just have it on one side, um, but for flexibility we provide both object files. And so what you can do is you can basically run your cable through this and it gets into the trunk and then you can run it along the main trunk sections. If you're wondering uh, how this differs from the main trunk, uh, you can see here the uh, main trunk itself doesn't have the notches on it, it's just uh, completely solid and this is the same uh, larger trunk as these are. And so normally you'd have these notched out um, if you had the real thing but since you can't break them that easily or you don't want to cut them because it'll just snap, um, we pre-cut them for you in a separate uh, 3D model. And so uh, it makes it pretty simple, you just run the wire uh, through this and into the, uh, into the trough. Now if you're looking here, we actually have um, two lids uh, that come with this system and um, with the uh, cable area notched out. And the reason we did this was so that when you can uh, run slightly larger gauge wires like we do here, you can just drop it in on top and it works um, perfectly fine. 
So uh, just to give you an idea of uh, the various different sizes we have, um, we actually produce the thing, um, do a wider angle on that, but we basically produce the thing um, with all the different sizes uh, available. So you have the smallest one, which is uh, C1.6, uh, and it goes all the way up uh, to the C1.43 here. And so you can get all these by going to the uh, website, uh, tracksite3d.co.uk. All right, so to duplicate what we have uh, going on here, uh, there's a couple of different products you need. So this product is our C1.43 uh, uh, cable trunking system. And what it comes with is it comes with uh, one of these, uh, the model for this, which is the uh, 10 meter section and with the uh, larger opening. It also comes with the model for just the uh, single individual one meter section. And you can print these out either individually or as much as you want. You can see here, um, I 3D printed uh, several of them in a row and they come with this uh, sort of uh, berm if you select, or berm if you select this particular uh, print option, which is just this uh, plate adhesion um, that's right here. And that's just to make it easier to get it on and off the 3D printer. Um, in addition to uh, those two things, you also get the 3D model for the lid, uh, which is also important. Um, now we also used, like I said earlier in the video, the uh, C1.8, which is a smaller trunking, and like the 143, you get the uh, one meter section, you get the 10 meter section model, and you get the lid as well. And in addition to those, we're using the uh, C143 um, individual ones with the uh, notches in them, and those come with the lids. They actually come with uh, three or four different types of lids, and they come with the um, the actual one meter section as well. Now we don't have a 10 meter section of this because it just didn't seem necessary uh, since you can easily connect them together. So in the next part of the video, we're gonna show you how we install this. So we're gonna demonstrate uh, just routing the cable to it. Uh, we're just gonna show you a couple of tools that you're more than likely gonna need uh, to make your life a little easier. Uh, the first thing you're gonna need is blue tack. Uh, now I'm using a couple of different types of blue tack. I'm using this uh, kind of white gray colored blue tack. I use this to actually attach the lids and keep them secure uh, to the cable trunking. You could glue them, but since we're using real wiring, um, using the uh, blue tack makes it just easy to lift out for individual sections. It also makes it easier uh, scenically to, to pose things as well. And this is pretty cheap. I got this um, white uh, colored, gray colored blue tack for about uh, $2.99. And you can get various different brands. or Scotch, blue tack, I think I have one. Uh, there's also um, Instant Tacky and a few others. Uh, so, for example, there's another um, brand that we picked up which is a little wider uh, than the, um, the other one. Uh, in addition to that, you're also going to need a few other things. You're going to need a knife or some kind of blade. Um, I use uh, this blade on the uh, pen knife. It's uh, pretty straightforward. And the reason you actually need it is for um, finishing the model. So, like I said, when you 3D print some of these things, and they come with, uh, well, if you turn the option on, uh, they come with this um, sort of build a pl uh, build plate adhesion um, support, which this, is called, this one's called a brim. Uh, they also raft and a few others, and it's just a style that's on there. Now, these normally peel off pretty easily. Um, if I show you on the video here, hopefully it, it should just peel off um, pretty straightforward uh, like that. And so you can see um, that piece peels off, and then you're left with um, a little bit of excess on there. And so what I use the knife for is basically just to, uh, it might be tricky to show you this on camera, but basically to uh, just peel this off, and it's a little tricky to do this on camera. Um, since you want to hold it a little closer to your body without cutting my fingers off here, but... Um, I'm sure it'll make good YouTube material if I stab myself. Um, but yeah, if you... It's uh, a lot easier to do this. Yeah, so you can see here, you just... You want to catch the edge of it and scrape it. And so on. You just do that for each edge. Um, where the brim was attached. And just to make sure that you just have the flush model. And then to finish it off, um, I have this um, sanding block. You just rub it a few times up and down to get the edge uh, sand it down properly until you're happy with it. And this sanding block has a couple of different edges. This one's actually coarser uh, so it works out pretty well. 
just do that a few times, and then you're left with the uh, kind of finished product. Now the interesting thing is by using the sanding block, you kind of create these uh, slightly not so smooth edges, um, and by doing that, it actually looks more like the concrete uh, texture that you get. Uh, you can see there, it uh, works pretty well. So um, the other thing you might want is a small screwdriver. Uh, just to help position things and uh, wiring and so on. So uh, those are the tools that you need and uh, what we're going to do next is just show you how we routed the cable into this and uh, you can see how easy it is. Uh, a couple of options with securing these, uh, I'm not sure if you can see there um, from the video, um, but actually PVA glued these down in place. So um, the first step if you're doing a lot of it or you're not quite sure where you want it, um, what you could do is basically just blue tack these down. Uh, you just have to use a small piece of blue tack, um, like so, and uh, you can blue tack these things uh, very, very easily. So if I uh, grab one, which I have here somewhere, um, so you can grab. Yeah, so I have one of these here. If I just grab it, all you do is you uh, take the piece that's there, put it on the blue tack, and uh, push it down and it's uh, held in place now it's gonna move right with the, you know depending on how much blue tack you use um, but it's a good idea you know just to kind of put it down with a little bit of blue tack see where it looks see how it looks see if you like it and uh, you can adjust it pretty easily so if I want to move it a little bit closer and um, I can do that as well if I decided maybe I want to turn it this way uh, I can do that and so with all the 3d printing stuff the blue tack is actually kind of like a, a secret tip um, for helping you position it on the layout so when you're ready uh, and happy with it, what you do is you just uh, pick up the pieces uh, one by one, remove uh, the uh, blue tack from it, and then glue it down. Uh, you can skip the whole blue tack step if you want, and uh, if you know where it's going to go, and just uh, drop the PVA down and, and glue it as well. I'd recommend using PVA. Uh, it doesn't react with the plastic at all. And uh, the other thing with it as well is that uh, if you use uh, enough PVA, you can kind of position it around a little bit as well. So if you don't like where it's where it's looking, or you need to move a little bit uh, to make it look a little bit better, um, you have some time with a PVA glue. So uh, installation is uh, is pretty straightforward. Uh, if I uh, remove the lid here, and we're going to take the wire, and we're just going to drop it in place. Uh, we're going to bend it slightly. Uh, I know it's kind of tricky for you guys to maybe uh, see this. And we're going to line it up with the uh, hole that's right there, and it goes down into the cable trough. And then you just basically bend the cable like so, and it's in. Um, you may have to uh, push it down a little bit depending on how uh, your cable has been laying around. Uh, this has been routed different ways for a different project, so it's uh, a little bit unhappy with me, but. Um, that's basically it, right? So you just uh, drop the uh, lid on top and uh, work your way down through the thing until you get to the other end. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do this um, with the larger section here. Uh, we've got some of the uh, lids installed, so we're just going to show you the process that we use. Um, when you print out a whole bunch of lids, they look like this on the um, out after they come out of the 3D printer. Uh, so I printed about 60. It took like uh, less than three hours to do that, so uh, it doesn't take uh, too long at all. Uh, so what you do is just uh, pull off a small amount of the uh, white blue tack, uh, kind of just roll it a little bit, uh, like so, and then attach it um, like that. We have our cables already installed, uh, so I just normally put it at a bit of an angle, uh, make sure that it's in the right spot and then use a screwdriver uh, like so to uh, push it down and there you have it it's uh, that simple and so you just uh, repeat that all the way through until you get to the end and uh, you have a working cable trough uh, you can see here um, uh, where I glued it down I had some blue tack still uh, sitting out so that's something you need to be careful of. Uh, this I'll hide. I'll just uh, either paint over it or we're going to probably ballast it up to about here anyway. Uh, so it's level with this. Uh, so it'll look, look pretty okay. Okay, 
So we just want to show you this from another angle. Uh, as you can see here, we have the uh, C uh, 1.8 smaller trunking with the tr um, with the wire come off of it. I probably should have used orange wire uh, here, make it a little bit better, but I can always uh, paint it or color over it later. Uh, but you can see here it goes into a larger trough, and then you've got the uh, lids on top here. Makes it look more like a uh, real set of uh, lids. And just so to recap on this, um, you really only have to uh, peel the edge off with a knife uh, just to, if you use that brim support. If you, if you don't use that brim support, uh, you don't need to do that. It will just print it out. Usually the brim support though makes it easier to pull it off the, uh, the build plate when you're done. Um, but if you know how to peel a carrot with a knife, uh, you'll be able to very easily um, just trim the edges of this. And you just want to make sure uh, it's completely uh, trimmed out. So uh, then all I do, like I said, is take it off camera here and just file uh, it down with the uh, sanding block. Uh, get the uh, blue tack, just uh, roll it like you do a uh, plaster scene on your kid. Uh, stick it on like that. Uh, position it just a little bit ahead of the uh, things, make sure it's actually in the trough, like so, and push it into place, like that. And you may have some excess, so you can use the screwdriver to scrape that off. And there you have it. And so you just basically continue this process um, to get down all the way to the uh, other end of it. Okay, so uh, all the stuff that you've seen that's uh, 3D printable, uh, you can actually go to trackside3d.co.uk and find out how you can uh, download it yourself. Uh, you can um, download the individual products, uh, buy them through the store, and then you end up getting uh, the downloadable file in your email. Uh, another option would be to use a subscription. There's a subscription service where if you subscribe, uh, you actually get access to all of the products that we produce as we produce them. So that's uh, worth checking out as well. Uh, so all that information is available over at trackside3d.co.uk. Uh, if you don't want to invest in a 3D printer, maybe you have a small layout and you only want a couple of these, uh, we are working with some model railway clubs and societies uh, to offer these to their members. So if your club or society doesn't offer it yet, uh, go check out our website trackside3d.co.uk and maybe uh, send it to the folks that run your local club or society and ask them to check it out. Uh, another option is that uh, we're working with a number of companies in the UK to uh, produce these for us and make them available. So if you're interested in perhaps uh, picking up one of those, uh, also fill out the contact form or let your local mall railway shop know that we're willing to work with folks uh, in the UK to make these available to people. So uh, feel free to uh, put us in touch. Alright, well that's it for this video. I uh, hope you found it enjoyable and interesting. Uh, we have a lot of more really cool uh, little uh, projects like this uh, coming out. And if you want to see more of our uh, trunking system, uh, keep an eye out for our August Mall Railway uh, layout update, which should be coming out in the middle of August. Alright, well I hope you enjoyed the video, and until next time.